Hi guys, this is Bobby from Copenhagen TV Repair and uh, this is a video of how to test Samsung power supply board or BM44-00222 A as you can see here uh, that is used in certain 50 inch plasmas that are reasonably old by now uh, PN50A530, 550, 560 and a bunch of others outside USA which models I don't really know uh, this is a quick tutorial I'm not, I'm not going to get in details about how to repair what goes bad what not uh, all the models that I listed tend to develop a well-known issue on the main boards for which you can find tons of people providing repairs online including uh, ourselves we've been doing those boards for quite some time and uh, oftentimes when one can't figure out which one is bad the main board or the power supply board because the TV just keeps on clicking and the truth is there is not a very fast and reliable way to say which one is bad this one develops its own set of issues one of which is the same thing it just is just clicking and what I'm about to show you is not uh, nothing groundbreaking nothing really strange people just don't find it it's the same procedure that can be used for nearly all plasma TV power supply boards so if you search for any video on how to you how to test a plasma power supply board chances are 99% of the technique will be the same we have such videos people just don't know it and um, don't search of course on how to test BN44-00161 for example or 162 or 183 or a bunch of the other power supply boards but the technique is pretty much the same the reliability is also pretty much the same uh, which is to say there is no 100% guarantee that by going over what I'm about to show you uh, you can be 100% certain that the board is good you will only be 99.9% .9 certain for practical purposes though this is very very darn near so the very first thing you should do uh, is test the main fuse it is different on the original power board it's on a socket and that socket that socket tends to cause the 10 or 12 amp fuse I don't remember what it was 12 amp as the board shows uh, it oftentimes causes burning around the fuse and it, it oxidates the, the the metal contacts of the socket uh, making bad contact which is a reason for the power to occasionally just burn that fuse and that fuse alone and it goes bad the replacing the fuse is a short-term solution it's one of the rare cases where the only thing that goes bad is a fuse uh, and, and nothing else merely replacing the fuse does not work because the metal contacts in the socket are oxidated and it starts arcing again and you know shortly after days hours whatever it can burn again so what we do on every board that comes here we replace it uh, with the axiolated fuse and that just holds until a different type of failure now there are other different types of failures and I'm not going to be covering in, in all I'm going to be covering the first and most common problem and that is a, a fuse that is burned and honestly a burnt fuse may be burned just because of the socket or maybe burned because there is more serious burn on the board itself I recommend seriously looking, I mean carefully looking at the socket and seeing whether it has a kind of bluish usually when the when the socket burns you can see the burns on the inside you can see burns under the socket uh, and this is how you know the socket is your main problem so you test the fuse with a multimeter on a diet mode it should do the exact same thing as if you short the probes if the fuse is good it should be just like this if it's not one of two things is happening either your fuse, fuse was burning in the socket and if you see signs of that happening then you know most likely that is the case or you have a more serious problem either in the uh, mains rectifiers or 
uh, the power factor correction transistors which you should test for shortage or you know, sometimes those capacitors may be so dry that they cause overloading and burn of uh, the mains fuse uh, there is no really simple and short way of how to tell you this is what it is and I don't want to get in too much details on how to test this at least in this video uh, so let's say you've checked let's say you know how to check those and there is no shortage here and there is no shortage on uh, the power transistors that are driving the VS transformer uh, you just want to see whether the board works or let's say your fuse was good to begin with so what you do is you will want to power the board and you want to focus on those two connectors here when you turn the board on when you just connect it to power what it should do is uh, I have a little switch here that I'm gonna flip and this connector is a little bad and pardon the quality of my video I'm the first to admit that this is a regular phone and maybe I should get something better this is being considered so uh, what is the first thing that should happen is that light should come up and literally nothing else it should be steady solid green and there's nothing else that you will be able to see however on the pins here that says um, PSON and on the pin that says standby so this is on the right side the second one from the right which says STBY you should be having 5 volts or around actually on the on the PSON it's not gonna be 5 but on the standby I believe it will be 5 let me see where can I get this um, I will get a crocodile if I find one but I'm not finding one sorry about that okay we'll do it the cheap way just hanging in there and what you should have here of course your meter should be on DC for that so what did I say on the second one the one that says standby Let's see how they're organized there in the table top bottom this doesn't seem to be grounded that contact and maybe I will try the one at the top here and then still the same oh sorry I'm at the wrong pin okay so this is the right pin and it's showing 5 volts as I said so the standby and if you have that light by the way the standby is present so you do have 5 volts and what you have on the PSON pin which is 1, 2, 3, 4 from the 1, 2, 3, 4 from the left you will be having my bad you will have nothing on this connector but it will be on that one so on that one it is PSON is the very first so this is the first it's not gonna be 5 it's gonna be something slightly less but it's gonna be over 3.3 which is the logical one so it's negative because I have swapped the leads my positive lead is on the ground there and my negative lead is that way and the reason that is so is because this one is sharp and this one is not and there is a reason for that too but anyhow just just, just ignore the sign uh, of the voltage what you get here on the standby pin is minus uh, sorry plus 4.5 volts and in order for you to turn on now the only thing that works on that board is a standby transformer uh, which produces those 5 volts it drives this little uh, main processor which basically controls the board and what you need to do in order to wake up the board's uh, more powerful transformer but not the most powerful this one which provides a bunch of other voltages is you need to short here the pin that is PSON and that will be the first pin that I was measuring 4.5 volts this one to ground and to do that I just have a simple connector that I don't have to do it with wires but basically what, what you can do is you can do a simple wire like this this hold on I gotta pause for a second 
Okay, I'm back. I'm sorry, I had to interrupt for a moment because uh, there was a walking somebody who wanted attention. And uh, where were we? I was explaining that what needs to happen is the PSO needs to be shorted to ground. And again, this is very common for all other types of videos. And I have this little dongle here that has just that. It has the two wires shorted for PSN ground. And here's what's going to happen when we plug it in. You can do that with regular wire. Uh, you can do it with a you know, tweezer or something. But wire, something that will hold re reliably, will be the best thing to do. So you jump those, the power clicks. And if everything's fine, that light still continues to be green. It doesn't blink. And the power clicks two times for the two relays. Click, click. Or in the opposite order, I don't remember which one was first. But it's a very distinct click, click. The, the two go off, I think, together. Or maybe one at a time and then will be another one. But here's how they go on. Click, click. And this stays on. Now there is a bunch of other uh, voltages that come around here, but as long as the power supply stands, this stays green, doesn't blink, and it says click click, and there is not one single or one click, and then shortly after click or regular power cycling, you're good. Uh, at that point, you have the D53 volts on this connector. Those two are a good choice, and if you measure those, you will have the 5.3 volts going out. And that means that um, that circuit here actually means that the power factor correction circuit is working fine. There will be 390 volts on the back of those guys. And there will be a bunch of voltages going out produced by these transformers, but not the two most powerful ones, which are the VS, the screen sustain voltage, and the VA. Actually, I'm not 100% sure about the VA. Some of them have it at this point, but no, not this one. No, no, it does. Okay, so VA is up, which means that on this board, VA is produced by this transformer as well. On some boards, it's produced by the VS transformer. So you have 57 volts. As you can see where I've uh, put the, the tester on that one. And the very last voltage is the VS. And for uh, in order to activate the VS, you have to send 5 volts, say those 5.3 that we just measured here on D5 volts. You have to send them to the pin that is called VS underscore on. The second one. And again, I have a little, a little jig that does just that, so I have to mess with wires. You don't have to have it, you can do it with wires. And I'm shifting that to the VS testing pin up there. And what I want to do is I want to press that little button that actually does the shortage. And when I do, I have 205 volts and it's still green. You don't have to really measure those, even though it helps to know that it actually does something. I, I would recommend it. And at that point, a bench test of the board is fine. That tells you with 99.9% .9 certainty that this board is working good. It's not 100. In order to be 100, you need to measure all the other voltages around the board. Because one in 100 may have the sound output voltage, which may or may not be monitored. Most of the boards have built-in power checks. Uh, which watchdogs that if, say, the output voltage for the audio amplifier is not present, it will shut off with an error code. And when it shuts off with an error code, for whatever reason, this LED here, the green one here, starts blinking. And the number of times it blinks gives you an error code, which is shown by this table. Now, the table doesn't tell you what is wrong exactly on the board. It tells you which circuit, which witch dock triggered the error code. And that gives a good starting point for troubleshooting, but it doesn't correspond to, I have three blinks, ergo, this is what is bad. It doesn't work that way, unless it's a very well-established pattern that, again, happens 99% of the time. And then you can just assume based on historical experience that three blinks on that board usually means this and that is bad. Uh, this is all there is to it. Hopefully it will help someone. Um, it got long. 
Thank you very much for your time and happy travel shooting. Best of luck.